Welcome back to Fast Money. Bitcoin taking off this week, topping 19,000 for the first time since late 2017. For more on what is behind the move, where it goes from here, let's bring in Michael Saylor, CEO of MicroStrategy. Michael, great to have you with us. Um, Thank you for having me. We, we had you on because you're the CEO of a software company who decided to invest your cash into Bitcoin. Uh, and I'm wondering how, how you came about that decision. Were you, were you thinking we've got a lot of cash because our business generates a lot of cash? So, you know, could it be treasuries or money market, straight up cash or Bitcoin? I mean, what was your thought process? Well, the story here is due to the rapid expansion of the monetary supply by the central banks, the cost of capital has tripled from 5% to 15% over the past year. And if we look out over the next four years, bond coupons and EPS growth rates are going to need to exceed that hurdle in order to preserve wealth. We had hundreds, 500 million worth of cash, but we knew we were going to generate an, another 500 million worth of cash. And we realized that if we held it in cash, it was going to debase by 10, 15 percent a year. And I didn't want to lose half of it. So what isn't so well understood is the BTC. Bitcoin is the best safe haven treasury reserve asset in the world right now. And it's engineered to be superior to gold in all aspects. So that, that being the case... A lot of people understand the asset story of Bitcoin. It's up 100% annually each year for the past decade, more or less. Mm -hmm. What they don't understand is that Bitcoin's a, it's a monetary network. And as a monetary network, it's capable of storing and channeling energy over time without power loss. Uh -huh. So we got really excited about this idea. And we saw it as a solution for the store of value problem not just for the $300 trillion of capital in the world, but for the 7.5 billion people right. on the planet. And so that, that's pretty compelling. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the tr uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt, Michael, but you know, cash on a balance sheet and, and wanting to preserve the power of that cash is one thing. Investing it in something that's speculative is another. I mean, are you, are you a software company or are you a Bitcoin hedge fund? At this point, I mean, why bother with the software part of the business if your belief truly is, is that Bitcoin is going to go up 100 percent every year, uh, you know, going forward? Well, first of all, we do have a software company generating cash. But if we simply swept the cash into fiat currency and allowed it to base at 15 percent a year, we'd be losing as much on the balance sheet as we generated from the P&L. So that didn't make sense. Um, on the other hand, the traditional concerns about Bitcoin have been that it might be hacked, it might be copied, it might be banned. And after a decade, it hasn't been hacked. No one's managed to copy it. It's not going to be banned. So although people look at it as being volatile, it's volatile maybe in the first decade. The next decade going forward, it doesn't look like it's going to be that volatile. It actually looks like it's emerging as the primary Treasury Reserve asset mm -hmm. for people that are looking for some way to avoid the great monetary inflation. How do you view, think though, it, how do you view, though, the size of, of your Bitcoin position relative to the size of your business? And is there a point at which even just for portfolio management purposes, you trim your Bitcoin position in order to be conservative? I mean, your, your enterprise value is what, two point four billion dollars or so. I'm not sure what your Bitcoin position is. You had initially invested four hundred million or so back in August. And that position's got got to be enormous by now. Well, look, we, we love the enterprise business intelligence business, and we want to be in it, but we don't want to decapitalize the company by drawing our treasury to zero, and we don't want to allow our treasury to be debased by 10 or 20 percent a year either. So we had to do something. I think that as investors start to understand the Bitcoin story, they're going to migrate their capital on the Bitcoin network, and that's going to create a virtuous cycle of adoption followed by price appreciation followed by value accretion, followed by technology integration from companies like, you see Square and PayPal. It'll mm -hmm. be Apple and Google shortly. That's going to drive more adoption. And, and that means that you really want to plug your company into the Bitcoin monetary network, right? It's, it's probably the biggest thing that's happened over the past decade. It's, it's going to be bigger than the FANG stocks. It's going to be bigger than Apple, Amazon, Facebook, the social mm -hmm. networks. And it's the ideal time to plug into it because 99% of the investors don't understand what I just said. And with $350 billion of monetary energy in the Bitcoin network, it's all but unstoppable at this point. Last quick question, Michael. And this is a simple, straightforward. Are you a software company or are you a Bitcoin fund? 
Our P&L is a software company, and we sell the world's best enterprise business intelligence software. Okay. Our balance sheet is no longer invested in dollars. Our balance sheet is invested in BTC we, because we believe that's the best treasury reserve asset we could choose in the world. Got it. Michael, thank you so much for...